and welcome to a very tired mortician in the kitchen. Today I am talking about um, what is more commonly known as the Texas Funeral Sheet Cake. I am a California girl. Uh, my family is from California, so um, this is the California Sheet Cake. All of the food that we associate with funerals, aside from being comfort food, is usually something that is pretty easy because chances are you're watching this, mom, grandma, some of my friends, um, and uh, you have kids. There's probably a small child running through the place. Your partner is either about to go to work, just came home from work. You're cooking dinner, you're trying to do laundry. Um, I have a cat and Lord knows if he knew how to say my name, he would absolutely be screaming it right now. I'm also doing dishes. I um, had to do all the bed sheets earlier. Um, and then I also work, there he is, yes. He will probably make a guest uh, appearance and I can't stop him anymore. I just can't do it. I can't control this cat. Uh, thank God I don't have children because I would not be able to control them either. So if you're a mother, God bless you. So yeah, this is why funeral cake is involved. It is a <laughs> easy to make cake that you, oof, I can't yell at the cat on camera, can I? It's an easy to make cake that you pour in a sheet and you take away because here's the thing, funeral food, one, has to be easy. You are busy and you are trying not to murder your cat who you've taken too many pictures of and people will know if he disappears. But you also have to be able to put it in a car. Hence, this is a much, oh, for the love of God, just come sit next to me. Um, oh, okay. Two sheets, cake pans that I use, but honestly, you could also put them in a cookie sheet. I can walk out of the camera, maybe I'm This is Dennis. This is my amazing cat that I'm not gonna murder because he and me don't film. Um, and he's upset that I'm not paying attention to him. He has, by the way, ignored me all day, but like every good child, now that my attention is on something, he is angry and screaming at me. So I feel like you probably already know this, but you need the oven to be at temp. You don't want to start cooking anything um, under temp. You want to put it in right at what it's supposed to be. And uh, by the way, as tempted as you are, do not open the oven while you're cooking. You don't want to let any cool air into the oven. It ruins the temperature. So, oh Lord, I am um, maybe out of shape or tired from talking so much. Um, so we're gonna start with the first thing. Uh, if you haven't figured it out, everything that I make is plant-based, womp womp, so sorry. Um, I promise you if you're watching this, it's because you think dead bodies are kind of interesting. So if you're into dead bodies, swear to God, eating plant-based isn't gonna kill you. Um, be adventurous about Tibetan funerals and be adventurous about not using dairy. It's, it's, it's really gonna be okay. So the first thing we're gonna do is I've got a little bit of um, Bragg's, ooh, look at that glare. Bragg's apple cider vinegar, which apparently is now owned by Katy Perry. Hey, fellow Californian girl, if you would like to sponsor Mortician in the Kitchen, Katy Perry, uh, by sending me a bunch of Bragg's uh, products, you and Orlando Bloom, are welcome to do that. And I'll totally give you a shout out. I know this is crazy, but like Katy Perry totally needs my help. So we are starting with making some vegan buttermilk. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a cup of soy and one and a half tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. So boop, pouring it in one. I'm looking away because I have my recipe next to me. I like kind of know this recipe by heart because I've made it a few times, but I don't want to like mess it up while I'm doing this. So got that, got my little whisk. I am going to whisk it to incorporate it. And so um, the cider is basically going to, well, it's cider vinegar. So the vinegar is curdling my soy milk. Get a little, I'm going to try to do everything by hand. I usually cheats and I whip this in my blender and I put things in my KitchenAid stand mixer. Um, but I know that not everyone is like super obsessed with spending 
all of their paychecks on all the kitchen toys. And to be honest, you, you really don't need to. I just have um, a food and shopping problem. So I'm at, oh no, please. Um, okay. It's just, this is just gonna be yelling at my cat the whole time. Again, probably a child is running in the background. And if a child is not running in the background, you're lucky. Think about that. Um, so in a large bowl, I am going to add sugar, flour, cocoa powder, baking powder, baking soda, and sea salt using my whisk. I'm going to incorporate all those ingredients. I happen to pre-measure all my ingredients out ahead of time um, because it makes making videos easier. But I'll be honest, I would really encourage doing this in general. Um, I know that when you're baking or cooking, it's just easier to kind of like, what, how do you say, fly by the seat of your pants. But like, this has actually made <laughs> things so much more pleasant and I make a lot less mistakes because I have parceled everything out ahead of time so I know that I have the right ingredients. Um, so, oh Lord, this cat. I got my brown sugar. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put that in and like, it, it feels like you're gonna create more dishes, just be too dubbed because nobody's trying to like make life easier by creating more work. Um, I just rinse them out and I put them away, it's fine. So I've got my brown sugar. Oh, I forgot to say. So I actually take my big mixing bowl and I put my baking powder, my baking soda, and my salt in here first. And then I use my hands and I just incorporate it with my hands because I really, those ingredients are super important to um, ensure that they're evenly dispersed. You, the baking powder and the baking soda is crucial to a plant-based cake. You really need to make sure that that is fully, fully dispersed so that uh, your cake rises because without that, your friends make fun of you and say, this is why they use eggs and you don't really know what the eggs do, come on. Um, so I, um, true to my word, I, I did pause this video after picking up my disgusting cat and I washed my hands, a cat. Um, Boy, I can't wait to have like 10 of these really professional videos. It's just me yelling at my animal while I talk about how much I love being a vegan for the animals. Um, so sometimes I like to start with the darkest color first because if you can or can't see, what um, starting with the dark sugar does is it helps me know if I fully incorporated everything. It's kind of um, a little trick and you're welcome to use it or not. Okay. Ooh. Ooh, I'm so tempted to look this. Um, the next thing is my cocoa powder. Um, I would highly recommend getting a small kitchen scale and weighing, um, learning how to weigh things. I do have weights in my recipe because um, you don't realize this, but, or you, you do, and I'm gonna tell you, sweet baby Jesus, you have to stop. Um, flour and cocoa powder um, condenses so it's really important to aerate them first because you won't get an accurate measurement if you just scoop things in there. So I'm looking off camera because I wanna show you this. I got it on Amazon and I think it was like seven or $8. It's ridiculous, but I also feel like I am in Sleeping Beauty and I am the fairies making a cake for um, Princess Aurora because I am a nerd. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I like this because what it does is it's, it's not just a sifter. It is a sifter, it aerates though, and that's sort of the point. So I've already sort of sifted all my ingredients individually. I'm gonna go ahead and put in my cocoa powder and I'm gonna put in my all-purpose flour. Okay. And now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm mixing it by hand first because I wanna break up the brown sugar. So we're mixing, we're mixing, we're mixing. And again, um, we're kind of looking to watch. So right now, see, I can see the all-purpose flour in there. And so we kind of, you know, duh, I know I said this earlier, but it's like we're mixing to make sure everything is fully incorporated. Um, I like using my fingers also because it allows me to ensure that I've broken up all of the brown sugar clumps because my brown sugar is also gets very clumpy. So. I do have a whisk. I'm gonna do a little, oof, little, little whisking action um, because I want to keep that air in here. Oops. Okay. Don't whisk too vigorously because now I have made a mess. But 
I'm sure it's fine. Don't worry. Oh, I'm going to be serving this cake on Sunday. So I'm making it ahead of time for an event that I am doing. And I think it will be delightful. So, next thing I'm doing um, is I'm making a well in the center. I like to take my fist, make a little hole. And this is where I put all of my liquids. And what this does is by creating a hole in the center of your flower, you create a nice little divot to pour all of your liquids in. And it allows you to ensure that you're evenly incorporating stuff and you're not putting like all the liquid on one side of the flower and then it's clumping up like that and then you're trying to like sift stuff into it. So, whew, got my oil. Pour that in. Um, this is canola oil. I like canola, it has a lot of fat in it. Um, so it works really good for substituting the fat that you're gonna get from butter. This is my buttermilk. The reason you do this first is you wanna give it time to curdle. So in all this time, I have been yammering away and yelling at Dennis. It's had enough time. So pouring that in, being a little more artistic than normal. And, oh, okay. I'm also going to add, so here's the thing. My recipe says to just add vanilla. I'm gonna actually add a couple other things. So I'm adding my vanilla that I love using. Chocolate extract, this is sort of my secret to everything. I use it in my peanut butter cookies, I use it in chocolate chip cookies, I use it in chocolate cake. I would put this in pasta if I could figure out how to make it work. Actually, I feel like it could work if you were doing like chocolate mole kind of stuff. So, a little bit of that. Oh, goodness. And then the last thing that I'm doing is I am adding one last cup of milk that I've added some instant coffee to. So, all right. Milk, instant coffee. This is going to really amp up my. Ooh, chocolate and now I am mixing it by hand as promised even though I want to be using my stand mixer but it's fine now the stand mixer isn't cheating it's just using you know using technology but you really don't need it I do tend to make the mistake of starting off with a whisk when I do things by hand and then I remember that, oh yeah, this is going to start getting thick and too clumpy for a whisk. So I am going to just incorporate it and then I'm just going to finish this off with like a big spoon. Um, and again, <clears throat> I know you'll see a lot of recipes that warn you about like over mixing and they're not wrong. You don't want to like over mix and like get those glutens all excited but like uh, you gotta really go to get a really go to town on your cake batter to make that happen um so let's take a pause and then i'm gonna pour my cake in a pan that everything that you just saw that's pretty much it we're done i'm just gonna pour this in and then we're gonna have cake in about mm, 15 18 minutes Ooh, I lied. 25 to 30 minutes, folks. 25 to 30 minutes. So I'll see you soon. I realized I lied. I don't know why I said I'll see you soon. Guys, I like didn't even show you the most important part, which is a tin. You've probably seen one of these cake pans before. 9 by 13. Oh, okay. Here it goes. Can I do this on camera? So that's the batter. Delightful. Um it looks like cake batter. It also kind of looks like brownie batter. So it's a lot thicker than like a normal, I was gonna say, it's a lot thicker than a thin um, cake batter, but hopefully as I do this <laughs> very ridiculous pour, you'll get an idea of the viscosity. Ah, I'm doing it, I'm doing it, I'm doing it, I'm doing it, it's happening. Yeah, okay, that's a good pour. Honestly, this might be better than just showing you it because, whew, goodness, I think I might be really out of shape. Lord, I like cannot breathe, cook, and talk at the same time. 
So you can really just throw this together. Like I said, it's taken me about 20 minutes to make that and I've just been like yelling at my cat. I assume sub yelling at children. Um, but you won't be like talking to someone and making sure that you're staring appropriately into a camera and that you don't look like an insane person, which clearly I am, but I am trying to trick you because I want you to keep watching these videos and uh, give me money. Um, it would be delightful. You don't have to give me money, but do you know someone that would like to give me money? So now I'm going to go put my funeral cake. Ooh, oh, um, that noise is me um, lightly tapping the cake pan on my table. What it does is it breaks all those little air bubbles on the top. You're gonna be pouring frosting on this anyways, NBD. But, you know, I like to do that. I'm a perfectionist like that. And with that, I'll see you in 30 minutes. I usually like to go uh, the full amount of time, so I'll be back. All right, well, it's been uh, 30 minutes plus a little extra to frost my cake. And um, I've also, as you can see, I've changed. I'm dressed up and ready for this lovely funeral party I've got going on behind me that's clearly real and not a picture. So if you wanna see the final product, I might have already taken a small bite out of it, but um, this is it, it's pretty simple. As you can see, it's uh, about the size of a sheet, tin, cake, pan, sheet pan. Um, I put a little bit of chocolate frosting on it um, because this is a fun little shindig. I chose some very colorful sprinkles. Um, and then to make things easy for this video, um, I actually just bought some frosting and this is what I use, Miss Jim's chocolate frosting. It is so, so good. Ugh, I love it so much. So yeah, that's it. Um, Thanks for joining. I'm gonna have a little, maybe I'll have one more little bite of this. Mm. Oh. Okay. All right, I'm about to have chocolate all over my teeth. The best thing about this is this cake keeps for at least a week and it's also freezable, which is a fun thing I didn't realize. So you can put a cake in the freezer and you can pop it back out in like four days and it's still fine. I know it was a very like, wave of the hand clip way to be like it's fine but it is you don't have to tell anybody you can let everybody know you made it the morning of but and that's it so thanks for watching mortician in the kitchen and join me next time as i discuss uh i think i'm gonna do gingerbread cookies so i'll see you soon bye go you can you can go now